Joined today by Mr. Ari Meadows, the beer guy. Hello. Hi, guys. Uh, we've got the beer today um, given to me by Ari Meadows, uh, Raging Biarch. Uh, the Belgian style IPA from Flying Dog. Yep, got the same here. There we are. Um, before we joined uh, on here, um, I've had this before and I also did a beer mix with the Gonzo Porter. Uh, so it made uh, like a black and tan. The Gonzo Porter uh, and the. But, Really nice beer mix. Uh, I've also reviewed this before. Um, the beer guy, Ari Meadows, I had the different variation of the version bitch. Yeah, the uh, mango and uh, I remember the other bit of mango variation. I had that probably about two years ago now. Um, quite, it's quite nice actually. Enjoyed it. I can't remember too, awfully too much of it. Um, I did a slight quick. Research before we joined, uh, it was mango and habanero. Habanero is a spice, and mango is uh, a fruit. Mm hmm. Eight point flavor. Got, my, got my cap zapper here. My new toy. <laughs> Fires the caps off. <laughs> so it saves the cap as well as uses a projectile. Saves it and shoots it off elsewhere. So you, you lose it for a couple of weeks and then find it and it's a little present each time. It does smell like tin fruit. Yeah, um, like tin pineapple almost. Oh, oh no, um, ne nectarine, no, tangerine, nectarine. Yeah, definitely some next week in Tangerine. Yeah. Uh, and again with a mixed uh like metallic but um Yeah. A tinny. I don't mind tin. It's, it's it's got there's a like a almost a pine a piney flowery smell I'm trying to put on. Um Yeah. The the way it just shoots straight up your nose. <laughs> I mean, the artist um, creates a special presence with all the balls. Uh, two inflammatory yeah. words, one wild drink, nectar imprisoned in the bottle, lest out. It is cruel to keep a wild animal locked up, uncap it, release it, stand back, wallow in its golden glow in a glass beneath a white foaming head. Remember, enjoying a raging bitch, unleashed, untamed, unbridled, and in heat, is pure contour. Ralph Steadman. Now, um, Ari, uh, you work in construction and stuff like that, and you must deal with uh, artists of all types. Have you researched any Ralph Steadman? Uh, no, it doesn't doesn't come across. Um, I haven't heard the name to be honest, um, mm. but no, it reminds me of that um, the fellow who used to do the ones for Roald Dahl, um, Quentin Blake. Oh. Quentin Blake, is, I think it reminds me of some of his work when when he used to do uh, the like, was it the Twix or something? Just reminds me of him. Yeah. I mean Roald Dahl. Um, I mean from all our childhoods, uh, made some really weird cartoon imagery. Mm. I mean, you're much younger than I am. Um, do you still get much Ronald Dahl presence in um, your youth? Yeah, I used to. All the time, I've got, I do have loads of books. Um, still got them, actually. Um, yeah. I think my favourite one was probably like the Cockatoos one. Um, one well, to contain the cockatoos anyway. I think that was one of um, uh, the artist Quentin Blake. That was one of the actual um, drawings he was quite mo most famous for, or also the twits as well. Um, yes, the twits. Yeah, it all comes back to you. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, 
I mean, the, one of the ones that always comes to me is James and Giant Peach because yeah, I mean, yeah. me and you have had many adventures, uh, yeah. and James and Giant Peach is that kind of adventure, isn't it? It is, yeah. I do. I've got that book somewhere. It's probably somewhere around me, hidden under piles and piles of stuff. And if you if you look at the artistry in the books, it's very similar to. The levels, it's very yep. edgy, very raw. And um, there's, a, there's actually, in Yorkshire, um, in Orn Firth, there's actually a bar dedicated to the artist uh, called Gonzo. Oh, okay. And the food is really nice, and they, they do uh, pay homage to the raw uh, artist in the artwork. Cross the bar, and they do serve uh, really good food, and they they sell lots of craft beer and real ales from the local area. All right. And you uh, have something similar. Look, over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if, if you've ever visited Orm Firth, it's also uh, home of another Yorkshire tra tradition: last of the summer wine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it. Did you have a chance to watch that when you was a young lad? Well, not much. In fact, I do, not in this room, I do have a model. I remember those old, um, I don't know what the models were made out of, but you know when they give you a model of a, of a, of a house or of a street yeah. or something? I do have actually one from Last of the Summer Wine. Um, that's actually, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's not in here actually, it's next one. But um, it's one of the buildings and it all used to, you clip the buildings basically together. They're all made out of clay or something and you all just yeah. kind of put them together. And uh, I can't remember, they, it's been a long time since they've done that sort of thing, but it was usually be about 30, 40 pounds a set and then you all put them together and <coughs> form oh, yeah. a town. Um, but yeah, I used to collect those. When I, was young. I mean, did they inspire you to your uh, today? We are. Adventures yourself. I mean, you you go to many adventures yourself, and you sample a lot of uh, beers from across the world. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, when I went to North Korea, I sampled some <laughs> interesting beers there. In fact, I do have a couple of bottles with me. I've got my famous Plum Hack 12 bottle, um, and this was a beer. Put it a little bit closer there, which we got in almost every single um, bar. Or pub in North Korea, it was the Pong Hack 12. Um, was it five percent ABV, and it was just like a dark beer. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoyed visiting all these different places. We went to in North Korea, Hong Kong, Beijing, and and saw my little beers all over the place there. I mean, does it inspire you to drink uh, many other wild creations like the Flying Dog? Um, I, I think it does. I think I kind of enjoy going around all places and seeing the local beers of that land as much as you go to a lot of Eastern Europe and there's not an awful lot of variation in taste of them. But um, yeah. you need out for the for the real gems. And I think we found a couple in North Korea and we found some pretty awful beer as well. But there were some nice ones like Hong Hak Eleven as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if you've I've had many from, from Flying Dog. Um, sometimes the beers can be really good from Flying Dog, and sometimes they can be not not so great. I mean, I've had um, the pumpkin beer, the Fear. Yeah. Amazing on tap. And it's just quite average in bottle. Um, and this, even with um, the mega flavours and aromas, mm. You do get lots of metallic aromas and taste from the beer. Oh, you do as well. It's coppery, really coppery, actually. Yeah. But you get that taste of metallic and coppery, but you, there's also other flavors coming through. There's, there's mangoes, there's pineapples, there's, there's, again, there's with the tangerines. Yeah. But it's, Putting all that to an effect, the beer is still making you want to drink more because you're getting all those different complexities. Quite a strong bitterness in it, like a yeah, from all the different fruity flavors, and you've got the slight metallicness, which isn't for me isn't the nicest, but you still want to go back and drink because of all the um, fruity flavors so, before. 
Yeah, same. I mean, would you suggest um, this kind of style of beer or this this beer alone to new drinkers of real ale and craft beer? Probably not. Um, firstly, because it's quite strong, isn't it? It's eight point three or something. Eight point three percent. It's a yeah. bit strong. I, I recommend IPAs to start off with because that's what I started off drinking beer. Yeah. Um, but in this strength, probably not. Um, and also, there's certain elements of the taste, I think, which may put future uh, or beer drinkers off. Um, so I would have to say no, but now I'm drinking it. I like it. really do like it. Yeah. Because me and you, we've drank beers from across the entire world. Uh, we can mm. capture all the flavours and stuff like that, and we know why... It's like that, and it's got so much flavours. I mean, negative and plus, but it's still a really tasty beer. Yeah, it's quite I mean, um, Would you say it's for the Belgian style alone? Uh, is it capturing any Belgian style flavour apart from the heavy sweet? Taste and the tangerine, which you, you get a lot with Belgian beers. Um, it's it's got the strength of a Belgian style beer, I, I could say. Yeah, and, then, and more of a, a like a Belgian brown style beer with a mix of a American IPA. And, and also, it's also got like the initial um, final warmth as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a combination, really. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, a Belgian brown mixed with um, an oppy American style IPA. Yeah. And when uh, we do these kind of examinations, we, we, we kind of pick it apart. And it takes a while to pick a beer apart like this. I mean, it's. Um, we get those simpler style IPAs. Yeah, it's yeah. more approachable for the newer drinker. Mm. This is quite complex in terms of yeah. the amount of different flavours it's got and how they work, all work together, and then how it compares to the actual style. Um, I mean, you 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 purchased this for and you, as you give it to me as a gift. Uh, yeah. Price wise, is it worth that kind of? complex variation of a Belgian style hybrid of an American style IPA? I think so. I mean, I didn't really pay for it, but I think the, um, the what you'd pay for it is around £3 over here, and obviously yeah. it will be or considerably less. Um, but yes, I think it's worth it because um, I look at IPAs as a similar sort of price range similar style and quality of price range, they're all around £2.50 plus. Um, well, well, where I get them from anyway. But yeah. it's definitely worth it because it's got so much more flavour and, and strength and more character to it than uh, the other ones, I'd say. Um, <coughs> I mean, um, I think when I purchased it, I think it was about £3 to £4. Yeah. I would have to pay that again. It's, it's just... A really nice complex mm. hybrid of an American style IPA. Mm. Be forever picking out different tastes throughout drinking it. Each time you're picking out a different taste. Like I say, it is very complex. Mm. The mouthfeel. It's very nice. It's warming, but as well as coats the mouth, the body is solid. It doesn't. I mean, recently we've been to many beer festivals together. Uh, we've had a lot of times when the body of the beer is been very, it's like watery and then yeah, yeah. thick water. The body on this is very solid. Very. It's, it's um. It's it's not watery. It's not too much. It's just kind of perfect, and it, how it works with the rest of the flavors and without giving too much to you. Yeah. I do find that it's 
because of the solidarity of the body, it's just like kind of quaffable but dangerous on the same. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you to a certain extent. I mean, I wouldn't want to have too many no. of this, but but um, but yeah, because it's so easy to drink. Yes. Still, like I, I still find there's a little tinge in terms of the way it kicks down your throat. That's would what you're telling me. Yeah, it's like that reminder. Oh. Yeah. I mean, uh, your terminology with this, we've, we've all met a raging bitch. <laughs> Um, we all know what that kind of means. It's basically you enjoy something and then it she turns into a raging. Yeah, I know a couple. <laughs> um, I bet after a few of these, you'd be turning into a raging. Raging bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it is a raging bitch because it's got initial kind of almost. If you think about it, it's got like the initial. So, well, they're not soft, but fruity smells, fruity flavours. Then bang comes in the kick at the end, and that kind of gets you. And um, it's just yeah. the way the beer develops. Yeah, it's a perfect name for it. I mean, I, I would try if anybody that's trying to get into uh, drinking American beers, I would say either have a Belgian beer and then pair it with this, and then an IPA and pair it with this, and then like uh, two weeks later. I have a Belgian beer, an IPA, and another bottle of this, and then you, yeah. you, you can kind of pick a, pick apart the flavors a lot if you just do it over three nights or three weeks. Mm. But because we we ourselves, you had a lot of Belgian beers, a lot of American IPAs. Mm. You we can actually detect all these flavors. Mm. I mean. How does it compare to the beers that you had in uh, Korea and stuff like that? I mean, did they have any many styles of hybrid beers? Well, um, they don't really have, tend to have too much foreign influence. Um, I'd say they they have lagers, which I do have a bottle here. That's one we only had once, so I got the bottle. Um, this is actually a variation on Taedong Gang beer. Um, it's in the Sing Sao bottle. That's the Korean one. It's Nick, everyone else's bottles. Um, but <coughs> it's like drinking um, a kind of a Western lager. Um, I say like a, a Heineken or something, like a mass-produced one. But then they did another one, which, uh, which was a main Taedong gang, which is more like an Eastern European, which tastes, for me, has tastes got completely different in terms. It's got um, less honey flavors. Um, and also a bit more bitterness on it, more depth of flavour. Um, but I think there was one place where we had some pretty weird beers where um, they almost, it, it didn't feel like they've mixed two styles, it's like they've mixed two completely opposite um, uh, hops and malts and then thought, oh, what should we get out the end of this? And then that's what they get out the end of it. It's something just a bit odd. Um, and that was when we were in Chongjin. Um, there was a brewery there because, um, as I told you, they have uh, the breweries attached to the hotel. Sometimes they can't get the beer up to the, whatever area it is. So the brewery is attached to the hotel, and we went in there one evening. Um, quite a good story, this. Went in there one evening and uh, just sitting around with the fermentation tanks all around us. <laughs> and uh, so it's all the same beer in each one. And it was all of this kind of weird combination, but different stages <coughs> of uh, being processed. So one was like a light beer, and the other one was a much darker beer. So the darker beer I had, um, and it was just, it was just an odd mix. It tasted milky, yet there was some sort of strength to it, in in um, some uh, some spices to it. And I, I've never been able to find that again um, in terms of like a milky yet spicy beer. But I had something close to it. But ne never anything else perfect, perfect as it as it was. And the other one was um, exactly the same, but just a lighter version of. Um, le and I think it was had far less ABV. Um, I think the one they had was eight, and then another one was something like six or something. Um, and that was far more quaffable, like this. Um, but yeah, at the end of the night, we were like, 
how many beers do you reckon we've had? And uh, we were just counting up all our glasses. There was like probably about 40 pints between the eight of us, uh, which <laughs> quite a lot over an evening. And then go to him, well, how much does that cost? Bearing in mind, we don't have the local currency out there. We're not allowed to have it. And he goes, uh, yeah, 40 pints, uh, 10 euros. I was like, perfect, I'm going back here again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, what were the ABV styles over there? Was, was it as one, was it like the UK where it's, it's got to be about a certain ABV before it gets expensive? Or was it like uh, America where it's more freelance? I mean, it, everything varied because I think for us, they, they don't have an actual um, exchange rate. They have this artificial exchange rate, which is basically they've got a local kind of currency, the one, and it'll say the number. And then they'll pretty much come over to you. Each pint will be like one euro. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what ABV it is at all. It'll be one euro if it's like a 5% or one euro if it's like a 9%. And it won't even vary on how much they give you. Like, I know in certain bars, if it's like a 10, 11, they'll only give you a little bit. And if, if it's in Korea, they'll probably give you like a pint of it, and it doesn't matter. As long as they're selling it, it doesn't matter. Um, the other thing, um, with the uh, quality of ingredients, I mean, was the difference in price the same? I mean, you can kind of taste the richness. I mean, a lot of times uh, when certain ingredients are added to it, it does add a lot of metallic flavour. With main mangoes, you do get a lot of metallic flavour. Mm. Do you think um, sometimes when you were in Korea, it was so cheap because they added an alternate ingredient to the beer? Um, I don't think it was, it was cheap. I think every, everything there is cheap um, compared to over here. Um, but I did notice there was a flavour that came across almost every single beer which I had um, from a microbrewery, which was like a, a milky taste. No matter what beer it was that you had, um, even beer lager type, it was always like milky taste to it, um, which sometimes it was a little bit too much, um, but it, it, even strong, it's strongest on the darker beers, but, but it was a bit weird having it on the lighter beers, having that milky taste. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I think um, some of the best beers because they have this stupid system out there where you can't. I can't tell you the name of the beers from the microbreweries because they just number their beers like the way I do my my beer numbering myself. They just do one, two, three. I think like here, Ponghack twelve. This one, and my other bottle I have being third, Ponghack eleven doesn't. Um, even have the name on it. It's just because this one is less, this isn't available really to Westerners, um, so they just put the number on it rather than. It's, it's, they have that system all across the country. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven onwards. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the Europeans use that style. I mean, in the Baltica, if you look at their range, yeah. they yeah. are a number. And I think in the olden days, the number is basically the style because they didn't have names back then. Yes, yes. Use numbers for mm. styles. And then now, mm. the, now with recent uh, developments in technology and stuff like that, they're actually finding n names and styles for numbers. But and it's, it's, kind of, it's weird when you're going up to a bar, and no matter what bar it was, it'd all be a diff each time it was different beer. You'd go, or have a number one, or have a number three, or something, and you you would never know what you're getting. They'd just say number one light beer, and it was always ranged from light to dark. That's how they yeah. spell. the system goes the same with bottles, um, but it was always light to dark, whatever uh, pub you go to. I see how one or a three, and sometimes it would be like a two can be a light beer, or sometimes a four can be a light beer. It varies all over the place. No one tells you anything. You don't really know, but it was kind of potluck each time. It's nice though. Um... Are you ginger? Because I'm sure you were blonde last time I saw you. I'm blonde. Just, uh, <laughs> just lighting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope not my influence has turned you ginger. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. The, again, the metallic feel is putting me off a little bit um, in the flavour. But I think that's from the, the up flavour of the mango flavour. Yes, yeah. 
I mean, you, you started home brewing yourself. Um, when you was home brewing, did you notice any, when you're sampling, that certain hops give off certain, certain off tastes? Um, yes, I used Nelson Sobin hops quite well, I dry hopped with Nelson Sobin, and um, which is a bit weird to do with a bitter, but I did, um, just to see what flavour would come out. And when I tried it, I've only I've tried it twice since it was actually fully ready, but once before it was actually ready, and it gave the most strong bitterness I've ever I've ever had. Um, and it was just, um, it was it was like yeah, I can't quite quite put my finger on what the flavour was, but it was like fruity bitterness um, with an a serious kick, um, but in terms of the alcohol and the warmth in it, but um, there was something just an off taste about it. I couldn't quite put my finger on what it is, but now it's fully ready. It's kind of gone away a little bit, but it's still there. What I find funny also is that um, even though no mangoes, no pineapples, no tangerines, no oranges, yeah, I put in this beer, but. You put certain hops in a beer, and it gives you that flavour, taste, and all stuff. Yeah, and then they compare that to a fruit beer, and then they put the fruit beer in it, put the fruit in it, it makes it taste awful. Yes, <laughs> and it's it's weird that certain hops um, make you compare those kind of flavours. Hmm. But anyway, final taste, final thoughts hmm. on the raging bitch. Um, I'm into it, 100%. The only negativity is the metallic flavouring, and I'm guessing that's from the certain hops that, that's involved. Aroma is just very sublime. You're getting that Belgian-style brown ale aromas with a soft American, uh, probably about 6%. American style IPA, you don't get you're getting more than eight percent from the Belgian style. Mm. But yes, it's very nice. It's very soft, complex. I'd suggest this. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, I'd suggest people try it with a, a Belgian beer. Uh, then the following week, try it with an uh, American style IPA, and then the following week, try it with all three. Just to see the comparison, um, your thoughts? Yeah, on, on the beer, um, on the smell, it's, it's, as, you, as you say, very, very strong fruitiness. Um, in terms of, yeah, as we said before, tinned tangerines, but obviously the metallicness coming out there, the flavours. The, the, all the different fruits are really kind of having a battle in there. Um, so you're getting, um, it's, it's, each time you drink it, it, you kind of notice a different one that comes out more strongly. But um, I just think tangerines, I'd say possibly pineapple I'm getting a little bit of. Um, and then uh, nectarine as well is what the other one I'm looking for. Um, and then you get the kind of metallic flavours really coming through at the end with another warmth, big kick down the throat with the ABV. Um, but yeah, the, the strength I like, um, the metallic I don't like, but the fruitiness is always worth coming back to. Um, so I put the link to the beer guy, Ari Meadows channel in my description bar. Check out all these channels, uh, all these videos. Uh, and yeah, uh, thanks for watching and any final thoughts? Um. No, just try this beer if you can. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Goodbye.